Hello beautiful people today is 10th of October my name is Sahil and welcome to the newspaper analysis now guys first of all let's have a look on today's GS folder so today we'll take a quote from the French philosopher Montesquieu who had propounded the theory of the separation of powers Montesquieu says the tyranny of a prince in an oligarchy is not so much dangerous to the public welfare as the apathy of a citizen in a democracy now guys already yesterday i told you that the apathy means the feeling of indifference or showing a lack of unconcern so guys when in a democracy or when in a nation the citizens are not concerned with respect to the conduct of the government with the conduct of the institutions then guys that particular thing is even more dangerous than a kind of a total tyranny of the state itself so guys we can do utilize this particular quote into gs paper number 2 as well as into the topics of the essay so guys that's all for today's gs folder and now let's take the newspaper analysis now guys first of all let's have the overview of the entire newspaper first friends you can download the pdf notes of the daily article from our telegram channel the link has been provided into the description moreover the infographics which i use here into the video they are also provided into the pdf into our telegram channel now guys the first news it pertains to the rbi's forecast with respect to the monetary policy committee so we'll see this thing what it has been said here then guys moving forward here we can see that the nri quota has been called as just potential and not absolute so we'll see this particular thing then guys here we can see that the 5544 new species have been discovered now guys it includes it includes both animal as well as plant species however as they are so many guys it is not required to remember them all and they have been found from all the states so guys uh, that's it here now guys as we'll be moving forward here we can see that the delhi has become the first state to uh, announce the tree transplantation policy so we'll see that what is all about then guys moving forward in between there is much the and all that kind of thing now guys we are on to the editorial page now this particular editorial talks about the us election now guys as you will be giving the exam till then the elections would have been concluded so guys does the speculation is not needed then guys this article talks about the recent supreme court when the supreme court said that the protest cannot be held on to the public places however guys all these matters we have already taken up then guys this particular article talks about the politics going into the tamil nadu not needed for the upsc exam this article talks about the mental health into the times of pandemic will be seeing this thing then guys this one article i had taken from the times of india and this particular article is talking about the palliative care so we'll see that what is the palliative care and why it is needed into the present times then guys today is a saturday this is the ground zero this particular ground zero report is about the recent killing with respect to a love marriage incident however guys with respect to the upsc we did not need to see this particular issue then guys moving forward here we can see guys just few days back i have told you that india might be getting its national butterfly so guys on that particular thing the fight is still going on and there are three contenders for that particular thing that is the indian jasbeel krishna peacock and orange oak leaf now guys one among them will become the first butterfly national butterfly of india and as it will be selected we will be again seeing that particular thing after that guys moving forward now here we can see that the drdu has tested first anti radiation missile so we'll see that what it is all about then guys moving forward the showcase page not important for our exam now guys on to the world page here we can see that the un world food program has been mentioned that it has been given the nobel peace prize then guys the china style development for sri lanka will be seeing this then guys kyrgyzstan political crisis will be seeing here after that guys on to the business page we'll see that moral suasion is being used with respect to the present market situations after that guys the next page is the sports page however nothing important has been taken here so guys that's it and now let's take the newspaper analysis in detail now friends taking up the first news so this particular news pertains to the reserve bank of india's forecast on to the state of indian economy now guys just now the monetary policy committee has culminated and certain findings have been given into this particular article first of all guys what is this monetary policy committee now the monetary policy committee is constituted under the rbi act 1934 and from time to time monetary policy committee defines that what needs to be the government's strategy to control the level of inflation and to have an adequate growth in an economy now guys monetary policy committee meets every two months this particular committee has six members 
थ्री मेंबर्स आर द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया ऑफिशियल्स वेदर वेयर एज अदर थ्री मेंबर्स आर अपॉइंटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड दीज थ्री मेंबर्स हु आर अपॉइंटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट दे हैव अ टेन्योर ऑफ फोर ईयर्स इज इट क्लियर गाइज मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी कमिटीज चेयरमैन इज द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया गवर्नर एंड फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर कैन नॉट बी द मेंबर इन टू द मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी कमेटी guys already question into the upsc has been asked on to such lines so please do keep it in your mind now guys what happened now as we are talking about the monetary policy committee and i told you that it tells us about the inflation targeting so guys right now monetary policy committee has been given a mandate that the inflation targeting at the rate of 4% will be carried but there will be some leg room also that is plus minus 2% it means guys that our inflation targeting ideally it needs to be 4% but 2% more that is up to 6% it can go 2% less that is up to 2% also it can go so guys as the monetary policy convened their reserve bank of india had said that the indian economy will be going for a contraction into this particular fiscal year the contraction is 9.5% it means it, it means that our economy will be going into the negative 9.5% however guys it has been said that it is being estimated that the growth will soon be coming into the next fiscal year but this year will not be good now guys as i told you that the mpc whenever it meets it tells us about the uh, it tells us about the benchmark rates that is the repo rate so guys the repo rate has been kept at the 4% now what is the repo rate repo rate is that rate at which the banks borrow money from the reserve bank of india so repo rate is essentially an interest rate that is 4% now friends whenever the inflation will be more that repo rate will be increased for example 5% 6% however when inflation will be less this repo rate will be decreased for example from from 4% it can go to 3.5% 3% now guys right now it has been said that the repo rate it is not being changed into the last monetary policy committee it was fixed at 4% now also it is 4% because it has been said that the inflation into the economy is still high so therefore to control the inflation we will not reduce the repo rate now guys here we can um, some more uh, uh, declarations have also been made that is the rtgs that is real time uh, gross settlement will its timings are being extended earlier it was operational from 7 am to 6 pm now it will be operational 24 by 7 365 days now guys rtgs what it is it is a way of transferring money so guys from the rtgs when the money transactions are minimum 2 lakh rupees you can use the rtgs upper limit is nothing into the rtgs only minimum limit is 2 lakh so it is being made 24 by 7 earlier it was not now guys as we are talking about rtgs guys there is also one more that is the neft that is national electronic fund transfer now the neft already government into the december 2019 has made it 24 7 365 days so guys neft as well as rtgs will both be now 365 days 24 by 7 now what is the basic difference between the neft and rtgs guys neft the minimum amount is nothing rtgs minimum amount is 2 lakh rupees so this is one difference maximum amount in both there is no upper limit fine so at this point both are same now guys rtgs the money the, the settlement is in instant it is immediate for example just i send the money to you you will receive it now only but the neft it is not the immediate payment settlement mechanism what will happen in neft the payment goes into the batches of a half an hour each it means that suppose i made a transaction at 10 1 am fine another person made a transaction at 10 5 am then another person made a transaction at 10 10 am so guys whatever transactions will be made into half an hour at one stroke after the culmination of the half an hour they will be settled they are not being settled one to one instantly as it happens into the rtgs so guys this is the basic difference so along with keeping the repo rate unchanged the rtgs announcement has also been made now guys uh, one more thing here i would like to tell you see 
when we discuss about the reserve bank of india's monetary policy reserve bank of india under it has two tools one is the quantitative tools now by the quantitative tool reserve bank of india controls the amount of money that is into the economy in if, if inflation is more it means that amount of money needs to be taken back it needs to be sucked up fine fine guys so on one hand there are the quantitative tools on another hand there is one more type of tool that is the qualitative tool in qualitative tool reserve bank of india follows some other kind of ways for example it follows the moral suasion now in moral suasion they just request to the market that you please behave into a particular kind of manner so that we can get the help now guys as a part of a moral suasion the reserve bank of india's governor has made a request to the bond market or to the players into the bond market that right now the state government central government will be borrowing too much money is it clear and as you will give us the money please don't increase the interest rate very rapidly because into the long term it will harm the economy so a request has also been made is it clear now guys it is a part of a monetary policy only moral suasion in moral suasion just we make the request and all that kind of thing so guys all these things have happened here and as the time will pass we'll see that further how the economy will be moving forward so guys that's all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article it pertains to the nri quota fine guys now first of all the nri quota into the technical courses have been asked here now guys if you would have been studied into any technical college or management college you might be knowing that there is a particular quota for the nri students now guys first of all who are the nris nris now nri is any indian citizen who had lived abroad for more than 182 days into the past year into the preceding year he might be living there for some vacation purpose he might have gone for uh, some business purpose some employment purpose any purpose could be there so he will be the nri now guys when we talk about nri it has been said that 15% nri quota is there into the colleges now guys as the lockdown had started and as now the foreign travel is very much restricted and all that kind of thing now some of the colleges have said that they will not be keeping a specific category of seat for the nris because nri admissions we might not be there so guys on to that particular direction supreme court had said that the colleges have a flexibility with respect to the nri quota whether they want to keep nri seats or don't want to keep or what percentage they want to keep that is on to their own discretion now guys this particular reference has been made on to the basis of a judgment that is pa inamdar case now into the pa inamdar case supreme court ruled that the quotas for the nri are not compulsory moreover guys the supreme court had never liked the nri quota according to the supreme court's subsequent observations it has been uh, felt that the supreme court believes that nri quota are simply kept for those students who are not able to clear the exam and by paying money they want to get enter because often it has been said that neither the students who are getting the admission onto the nri seats they are nri actually nor their parents are nri so guys uh, it, it was said that it is not compulsory it is just a potential and the colleges have extreme uh, kind of uh, discretion here in this particular regard so guys that's all about this particular article now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article talks about the tree transplantation policy to which the delhi cabinet has given the permission now guys first of all as we are talking about the tree transplantation uh, policy what it is all about see now friends as the development is carried big trees very old trees they have to be uprooted now as the trees are being uprooted what is the provision right now it is that for one tree that will be uprooted 10 trees have to be transplanted now guys just assume that though 10 trees are being transplanted but those 10 trees will in no condition be giving the same ecological services which that one hundreds of years old tree was giving so guys to uh, basically uh, fight with that particular kind of problem 
the government has brought the tree transplantation policy where it has been said that that uprooted trees they will be transplanted to another location they will be given a proper ecosystem so that there they can grow it will just not be cut down and will be used as a source of timber now guys it has been said that into any project where the trees are being felled 80% of felled trees they have to be transplanted to other location moreover guys as i told you that the existing policy was such that for every one tree that was felled 10 tree were to be planted that thing will also be continued moreover guys for every transplanted tree 10 more trees are to be planted so what is all this you might be getting confused i will make you help uh, understand this by an example now guys just assume that suppose this was a land onto this particular land there was 100 very old kind of trees now because there are 100 old trees and all of them are supposed to be cut so guys 80 of these trees were to be planted into a new land this is one thing moreover guys as 100 trees have to be felt obviously for one tree 10 trees are to be planted so guys what will happen for this 100 trees which are being felled 10 trees it means 1000 more trees will be planted along with these 80 trees moreover guys for every transplanted tree also 10 trees have to be planted then guys these 80 trees have been transplanted so for all these uh, trees 10 trees it means 800 trees so guys 800 plus 1000 plus this 80 these many trees will be transplanted if these 100 trees are being cut down so guys this is the policy of the delhi government now guys it has been said that a specific tree transplantation cell will also be established which will look that whether all these things are being done or not moreover guys it has also been said that the tree survival rate also needs to be given attention now what is a tree survival rate guys obviously as these 80 percent trees are being transplanted so out of those trees 80 percent have to be made sure that they are sustaining into the new environment now guys 80 trees i have planted here so this 80 trees 80 percent needs to be made sure that they have been given such ecosystem that they have grown healthily over to a new place now guys Moreover, there are certain exceptions on also into this tree transplantation policy. That is, uh, many times these transplanted trees are might not to be planted if there are less than ten trees which are being felled, or if government gives a, a, a kind of a exception into this particular thing. Moreover, guys, it has also been said that after the tree has been planted after one year time a social audit will also be carried to see whether the trees have survived or not now the guys it has been said that social audit will be carried only where the hundred such trees have been planted so guys enough of the adequate safeguards have been taken and on to the paper the scheme looks very good because guys anyhow it has been said that the ecological services which are being given by the trees it is in it is invaluable kind of service however guys just few days back there was a survey where it was estimated just only one zoo into the delhi is giving the ecological services of more than 450 crore rupees so guys their value is much more not only that wood value is there but other values also there however as the tree transplantation policy we have talked there are certain criticisms also guys it has been said that rather than this tree transplantation government should had focus on to the tree preservation what is this a tree preservation now guys it has been said that if you are carrying any redevelopment and if there are trees in between you need to make sure that your developmental plan is such that all those trees are synchronized with that developmental project don't cut that trees rather include them into that uh, master plan of the redevelopment because guys it has been said that often it has been said that the tree transplanted trees they don't survive their roots basically they lose the root hairs and then they are not able to make a grip into the new soil moreover guys the money expenditure to uproot that tree into a scientific manner carrying that particular tree and lodging that tree into a new environment takes a lot of cost and often it has been said that such cost have been wasted because anyhow the tree dies so all those things are coming here guys with respect to our gs paper number three economy as well as gs paper number two we can do utilize this particular thing uh, into our answers so that's all and now we'll be moving to the next article
now guys this particular article it is talking about the mental health now guys today it is the mental health day and on to that particular day this article has been given into the hindu newspaper now guys we had seen that as the pandemic has came with the pandemic various uncertainties has come lockdown has come economic conditions have turned very much bad and because of that particular thing people have developed a kind of an anxiety stress and because of this anxiety and stress many times people are taking extreme steps such as the suicide fine guys we had seen many instances uh, earlier also into the aftermath of the pandemic now guys first of all just i would like to give you some extra point apart from this particular article guys there is a concept of the adversity quotient now adversity quotient means that basically it, it means your caliber to overcome the setbacks into your life whether you can bounce back from the problems which have come into your life so that is the adversity quotient so guys it has been said that into the present time rather than or apart from the iq intelligent quotient as well as emotional quotient a person needs also to have the adversity quotient fine guys so guys that also one particular dimension which you can utilize whenever the concept of the suicide and all these kind of things will be coming back and guys whenever we are talking about adversity quotient you can give an example of the amitabh bachchan because you might be knowing that in 2000 amitabh bachchan was about to file for the bankruptcy because of many of his ventures got failed and from 2000 the moment he got the kon banne ka karodpati episode he had bounced back and now we see amitabh bachchan as a mega star so this is a real life example why i am giving you the real life example because the adversity quotient the suicides all these kind of things might be asked this particular year into the gs paper number 4 because of the suicide committed by the uh, bollywood star sushant singh rajput so guys there this adversity quotient the signs to bounce back all these kind of things also become very much relevant apart from the health questions into the gs paper number 2 now moving forward so as we had seen that now the people are into too much of the stress so guys it has been said that now the mental health of the people needs to be taken care of guys it has been said that whenever the pandemic has been there the suicide rates have increased for example into the 1980 1990 the suicide rates of us increased dramatically because that was the year of the pandemic of influenza then guys into the hong kong the suicides were increased greatly in 2003 because of the sars virus that was was become causing the problem there after that guys in india also we had seen the suicide and the first covid related suicide also was registered into the india now guys as we are talking about the present time you know that maharashtra tamil nadu are the states where most number of covid 19 cases are coming but guys incidentally these are also the states where the high suicide rates have already been noted it means that here there are already risk groups but those risk groups have become even more vulnerable earlier also they were having tensions they were having disorder mental disorders anxiety but it might be aggravated even further now so guys therefore government had to gave much focus on to the mental health which is largely being ignored guys it has been said that right now what are the major reasons because of which the people are having stress the reasons are number 1 it is the fear of infection that people are having they have that if they get infected their entire family might suffer some of the other people might die if they don't die and that particular thing will involve a lifelong guilt and all that kind of thing then the fear of isolation now basically guys the connect has been broken the people they were getting socialized that particular thing is not possible so that isolation is also leading to a kind of a stress then guys economic stress is there because of the lockdown and these particular things might aggravate the suicides in india guys it has been said that into the least recent times whatever suicides we have seen into the people who had the covid 19 25% of the deaths happened into the hospitalized patients it means that guys into the hospitals they are not being given the any kind of counseling any kind of support and therefore guys within the hospitals also the support is needed to be given we need to focus on to the individual behaviors we need to identify that if suddenly people's behavior are changing for example the change in their speech change in their thinking extreme thoughts all these kind of things 
now guys we had been, it has been said here that into these societies the positive role can be played by media however right now media had forgotten all its basic etiquettes we had seen that how the sushant singh rajput's case has been scandalized and the dignity of life was basically the dignified uh, death was not given and it was over scandalized just for the trps so guys rather than that a positive role needs to be played by media it needs to sensitize the people that how they need to bounce back how they can develop the adversity quotient what are the helps that are available to them to show them a positive positive side of the life so but that is thing is not being done moreover guys we need to destigmatize suicide now what there is a kind of a stigma associated with suicide and because of that stigma people even they don't come forward to seek the help they don't talk because they see they believe that if i carry my feelings people will believe me that i am weak or uh, coward all those kind of things so that stigma needs to be removed moreover guys we also need to give the functional help to the pe people for example there are so many helplines which are there for the suicide prevention but they are not functional staff are not properly trained all those kind of things so we need to have the functional helpline we need to have a counseling services all such kind of things so guys the mental health care into the present time need not to be ignored rather right now it is the time we need to give them much attention everybody is talking about vaccine different kind of therapies but nobody is talking about the mental health impact that will be coming so guys that's all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article i had taken from the times of india editorial section now this particular article is talking about the palliative care now guys the palliative care is very important concept into the present times now first of all what do we understand by the palliative care now guys see there are so many people who are suffering from the life threatening diseases is it clear they are suffering from the non communicable diseases they are suffering from the neurological diseases hiv aids now guys these people as they are suffering they are also in so much of the pain they are in so much of the psychological stress they basically their quality of life degrades to such an extent that though they are living but inside they are dead so palliative care is such a kind of medical interventions that the quality of a life of a person who is suffering from a disease can be improved guys palliative care includes a large number of things it includes the motivational help spiritual help psychological help medical help all kind of help is to be given so that the family of a person as well as the person itself can live a good kind of life now guys it has been said that the palliative care includes reducing the pain because many times the people are in so much of pain so reducing their pain reducing their stress reducing their psychological help now guys the palliative care is too much needed now because guys if i tell you the data from the most reputed health journal of the world that is the lancet according to the lancet right now the lifestyle diseases or the non communicable diseases are emerging as the silent killers of the greatest number more number of people today are dying because of the diabetes is it clear so into that particular thing palliative care becomes more important but people actually don't receive any kind of palliative care now guys if i tell you the data today 40 million people are there who need palliative care but 78% out of them are into the low and middle income countries and we know that often the resources are not there 21 million children need the palliative care and 98% of those children are again into the low and middle income countries and again they are they don't get it it means guys the into these low and middle income countries the focus is to be given the direct indication is towards the india because india is a middle income group country and large number of chunk of the people who need palliative care is also in india now guys apart from the non communicable disease one more terminology had now entered the dictionary that is the long haulers now who are the long haulers now guys as covid 19 came a discoveries are now coming that the people who had basically uh, who had declared negative of covid 19 or the people who were declared that they had recovered from covid 19 even they are having the symptoms long term symptoms of covid 19 are coming blood clots within the, the lung portion has been seen all these kind of things have been seen and now guys scientific community is confused that whether a person will ever be able to recover from the covid 19 or not so lifetime problems after the covid 19 can also be there so for them a term 
term long haulers have been utilized now guys as these long haulers along with the non communicable disease will be coming now the even more need is there to work on to the palliative care now guys it has been said that it is not actually that much difficult we need to make our policy makers aware that actually not only working on to the medical all those kind of things palliative care also need to be given moreover guys we need to integrate the palliative care with our primary health care facilities after that guys specific funds have to be earmarked for the palliative care then guys essential medicines such as the opioids they need to be provided easily to the people for the palliative care now guys opioids often they are basically having the constituents of morphine etc which are highly regulated and now even people if it if a person is in pain they are not provided those kind of medicines so these medicines needed to be provided after that guys health staff needs to be trained that the people on to the palliative care their needs will be different they needs more spiritual counseling and all such kind of thing after that guys not only quality of life is improved by the palliative care but the duration of life is also it has been seen that it is enhanced because when a person is not in pain when the person is living healthy life that particular thing naturally extends the longevity so guys for all these particular kind of things palliative care needs to be given adequate attention so guys that's all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article now friends this particular article pertains to the drdo's recent test of the anti radiation missile rudram 1 fine guys so rudram 1 already you might have seen into our pdf which we give into our telegram channel that yesterday only i had provided about the rudram it was there into the pib now guys as it is today into the hindu will also again discuss it so basically rudram 1 is an anti radiation missile now guys what are these anti radiation missile will understand them now guys see any country's air defense system is greatly dependent on to the communication assets for example the radars etc which are providing them the communication now guys anti radiation missile what they tend to do they tend to attack these communication assets and they neutralize these communication assets if these communication assets are neutralized there will be two benefits number 1 they will not be able to alert their agencies they will not be able to alert their uh, aircraft fleets etc second is that they will not be able to jam the uh, basically instruments of the attacking party okay is it clear guys so just take one thing that suppose if the plane of india or iaf is going into pakistan and if their communication assets are denuclearized then guys they can't jam the networks of our planes is it clear so in that particular thing they are very much important now guys the rudram 1 as we, which about which we are talking it is air to surface missile and it has been developed by the DRDO now this particular satellite uh, uh, sorry missile has been developed and it has also been successfully integrated with the Sukhoi 30 MKI fighter jet and into the mean course of time the attempts are being going on that it will be integrated with the other fighter jets also now guys since 8 years DRDO is making this particular uh, missile technology and this is a very big achievement for india now guys this particular test was uh, carried on to the wheeler island of the coast of odisha now these uh, rudram missile as i have told you it has the range of up to 200 km now guys they have two most important components on board that is the inertial navigation system combined with the gps as well as the navigation and passive homing head is it clear by that particular by these two equipments actually what happens the uh, basically precision of the missile increased uh, massively moreover guys by the navigation and passive homing head these missiles capability increased further how i will tell you now guys once the target has been logged after that guys even if the target switches off their radiation then also by this homing head they can strike off the target so basically this is a very big kind of thing now guys they are uh, as this particular satellite uh, sorry missile has been developed this will increase the india's striking of capabilities and 
and as already it has been seen that there might be a two front war for india on one hand pakistan on another hand china so in that particular thing these missiles will be coming for a greater relief for indian flying forces so guys that's all about this particular article now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article talks about the world food program now guys the world food program has been given the nobel prize 2020 for the peace now guys this particular organization will be talking a little bit about it now united nation world food program it is working since 1961 and its headquarter is into the rome now this particular organization works to provide the food to the people who are into the conflict zones. Now guys it has been said that in 2019, 97 million people in 88 countries were provided food by the World Food Program. Now guys this particular agency's focus is on to the conflict zones and as it is providing the food to the hungry people it will also be helping to fulfill the sustainable development goal number two that is the zero hunger by 2030. Now guys SDG goals they were taken in 2015 there were 17 goals within 17 goals there are 169 targets that have to be fulfilled by the 2030 so guys that particular within that sdg goal 2 talks about the hunger so it is working into that particular direction now guys as the world food program has won the peace prize this particular organization has also made some very good interventions into the india also so apart from this particular article we will see these things also now guys it has suggested various reforms for example the reforms into the targeted public distribution system has been reformed suggested by the world food program moreover guys they had also worked to provide india the automatic grain dispensing machine that is annapurti these automatic grain dispensing machine can provide the grain to the pds card holders they can get grain at any time they just work like an atm fine guys after that they had also worked for the rice fortification now what is this rice fortification now guys in our country we have the problem of malnutrition malnutrition happens when a person is not able to get an adequate diet after that there is also the problem of the hidden hunger what is the hidden hunger it means that you are able to get the enough of the food but your but that particular food is not good into the nutrition even your stomach is filled but you didn't get the adequate of the nutrients now guys what is the fortification fortification is that we will be doing certain interventions into the crops into the food so that naturally its potential to provide you the nutrients increases for example guys by fortification we can increase the quantity of zinc into the wheat and all such kind of thing so the right Rice fortification has been helped by the World Food Program for the India. Then guys, MOU that is the Memorandum of Understanding had also been signed for the Uttar Pradesh Rural Livelihood Mission. So in all these directions, the World Food Program had helped India also and because it is helping all uh, the major countries who are into the conflict zones as well as the people who are hungry, it has been given the Nobel Peace Prize. So guys, that's all about this particular organization as well as the associated information and now we'll move to the next article. Now guys, this particular article talks about the increasing relations or increasing closeness between the China as well as the Sri Lanka. Now guys, just one day back I told you that the China is making a four country tour and within which the first step is Sri Lanka. Now guys, as China had visited Sri Lanka, now Sri Lanka seems to be very influenced with the China and they say that we will also be adopting the China style development. Now guys, they had said that first of all, the Sri Lanka China FTA will be restored back. FTA means a free trade agreement. Then guys, the Hamban Tota industrial zone which was being developed by China, that will again be streamlined and the port city of Colombo for which the China was giving the funding, that will again be brought back. Now guys, all these projects, they are more than 1.4 billion dollar projects and they are a very important element into the Belt and Road Initiative that China is working on. Moreover guys, the Sri Lanka had also said that impressed by the Chinese development into their villages, now Sri Lanka will also be developing their villages onto the line of China. Now guys, on to the face, nothing had been mentioned about the India or all those kind of things. This particular article is only about the India-China. But guys, 
if we analyze this particular article we can find certain things first of all guys china uh, right now sorry sri lanka is ignoring the strategy of the china that is the debt trap strategy into the debt trap what china does china provides the immense immense of the money to the participating countries for example as the belt and road initiative is going on all the countries which falls into between china had built massive infrastructure onto those countries and add money had all as money has also been given by the china into the long term when the countries will not be able to service the debt will not be able to service the interest rate china will claim the ownership over all those projects and guys in that particular way china will enjoy virtual sovereignty in the entire region so this is the debt trap strategy or the debt diplomacy that china follows that same thing it is also doing into the sri lanka but sri lanka is not able to recognize that particular thing right now moreover guys as we are talking about china china has a specific plan that is a string of pearls so into this string of pearls china is building the infrastructure around the india to contain the india for example hamban tota in sri lanka then the cox port then the gwadar port into the pakistan so basically china is encircling india and sri lanka now is helping china against the indian interest and as this particular thing is not beneficial for india so guys the china uh, sri lanka might be little bit need to be little bit apprehensive but sri lanka is not uh, caring for that issue so guys as the days will pass we'll see that what implication it has because now india might also be giving certain of the observation so guys we'll be seeing this particular thing so that's all and now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article talks about the recent political crisis that has erupted into the kyrgyzstan so that will be thing now guys first of all you might be getting some suggested videos and all that please guys don't go too much deeper into this particular article because internal politics of that particular state is not that much relevant if it would have been sri lanka if it would have been some very strategic country for india it might be important for upsc but now you just overview will be suffice now first of all what is kyrgyzstan kyrgyzstan is a central asian country who are the neighbors of the kyrgyzstan you can see the kazakhstan then there is uzbekistan then there is tajikistan after that there is china now guys as we are talking about kyrgyzstan kyrgyzstan has been said that it is only central asia's democracy now guys as it has a democracy the president the incumbent president that is the suran bey jinbekov he has been now facing the protest or he is facing the backlash what happened just guys on to the last sunday the elections were carried into the uzbekistan now guys if i tell you little bit about their elections now any political party who want to get an entry into the parliament they need to have at least 7% of the votes if your vote share is less than 7% you can't sit into the parliament now what happened now guys only four parties were able to get more than 7% vote and out of those four parties three parties were the pro government parties it means only one party was there into the parliament who was of the opposition and their vote share was just above 7% they were also very much insignificant now guys because of this particular episode now the charges have been levied onto the ruling government that is the gov that that is onto the suran bey uh, jenbakov president that he had rigged the election he had done certain corruption into the election and for that but because of that particular thing president had ran from his presidential uh, palace that is the white house and all these protests are going on they had carried or occupied the uh, most important public buildings now even the election commission of the kyrgyzstan had said that the election results will be annulled they are not being considered but guys still the protest are going on however guys if i tell you about the protest it is not new because already in 2005 there was the tulip revolution and in 2010 there was the melon revolution into the kyrgyzstan now guys if we talk about the kyrgyzstan it has a very strategic location and very vital interest are there now guys within the kyrgyzstan usa had their base when the ussr has occupied the afghanistan now guys however the base has been closed in 2014 but being into the central asia us has a very important stakes here after that guys russia also has very important stakes because it russia says that the uh, that the kyrgyzstan is a part of their backyard and therefore into and their backyard they don't want any crisis or any kind of 
problem and then guys china's belt and road initiative it also passes from the kyrgyzstan so the region is very important to all these countries and it is an interest that rather than taking sides the countries should come together and should solve this entire scenario so guys this is all about this particular article just we need to know that what actually is going on so that's all i hope you have understood this and now we'll be going to the question section Guys, please pause the video and try to answer the question. Question number one is with respect to the graded response action plan. Please read the statement and identify the incorrect code. Question number two is with respect to the television rating points. Please read the statement and identify the correct code. Question number three is with respect to the South Asia Economic Focus Report. Please read the statement and identify the right options. Now guys, in question number 4, please identify the right pairs. So guys, that's all about the today's newspaper analysis. I hope you are liking our discussion. Thank you so much.